You've clicked or tapped onto the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, Weather for Weather Geeks, the Friday evening edition. We've got some busy weather this evening. We'll have some busy weather, potentially anyway, as we go into the day Saturday. So let's not waste any time and get right to it. First of all, the numbers today was a very seasonable, very standard issue August day across the Valley today, with moderate humidity and highs right about where they should be at this time of the year. Generally in the lower 80s, we've had a pretty seasonable week. Overall, I'm recording this video at 7.18 p.m., and at that point, uh, we have some thunderstorms uh, pushing into the western part of our television viewing area, western Columbiana County, western Mahoning County included. These are non-severe, but there are uh, some bolts of lightning, certainly, and some downpours associated with these. Earlier on today, we actually had a tornado warning west of Cleveland for a time with a storm that was riding the lake breeze, kind of allowed it to achieve some rotation. That has long since expired, but it's a wet... Uh, beginning to the preseason game up in uh, Cleveland. The Browns uh, taking on uh, Washington, I believe, this evening. Uh, up in Cleveland, and uh, yeah, wet and stormy start to the game up there. All of this is kind of lining up along a warm front. It's really easy to pick out when you look at the dew point map this evening. Our dew point locally at the Youngstown Warren Airport in Vienna, 62 in the 7 o'clock hour, but uh, the dew point a healthy 67 in Columbus and 67 in Indianapolis actually gets quite a bit worse as you go down into the mid-Mississippi Valley. Really soupy year down here. Now, we are going to see a general increase, or a gradual increase, increase, I should say, in our dew point temperatures over the next 12 to 24 hours, and that'll be part of what fuels potential thunderstorms later Saturday. As of this recording, a couple of severe thunderstorm watches out across the upper Midwest. Wouldn't be surprised if we had a new severe thunderstorm watch somewhere around uh, the lower Great Lakes, well west of here, uh, before the evening is through. So, tonight a little bit touch and go for the next few hours, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Yes, there can be a tropical downpour associated with these uh, right up through mid to late evening. After that, quieter weather for a lot of the overnight as showers decrease in coverage. Tomorrow morning could start with a shower, but not looking at much rain for most of the morning and the midday. As I speculated last evening on this video, the Storm Prediction Center today did uh, expand the level two slight risk of severe weather for Saturday and Saturday night to cover a good chunk of Ohio, a good chunk of Pennsylvania, and actually a good chunk of New York State as well. Uh, this is, you know, something we see on average 20 to 25 times per year. It is nothing all that unusual for us to be in a slight risk of severe weather in the summer season. Uh, the uh, Storm Prediction Center did um, mention today in their midday discussion that uh, some thought was given to putting in a level three enhanced risk somewhere within the slight risk zone, but they didn't pull the trigger on that just yet. We'll see uh, when this becomes the day one outlook overnight tonight, if they do indeed add an enhanced risk somewhere. Putting some percentages on different severe weather hazards for Saturday afternoon, the tornado risk is non-zero, but it is pretty low and it looks like it's probably highest around and south of Interstate 80. Um, it's a, basically a 2% chance of a, uh, a tornado occurring within 25 miles of any spot on the map. The bigger, more likely risks or hazards will be hail and damaging winds. But, you know, this isn't a slam dunk as far as the severe weather tomorrow. We've got some things maybe working a little bit against us. One of them may be something we call lapse rates. Um, in other words, how fast the air cools as you go up through the atmosphere. Um, if it doesn't cool real rapidly, uh, and at certain levels of the atmosphere, uh, we call that, you know, kind of mediocre lapse rates or not real high lapse rates. And, and that can inhibit big, tall thunderstorms from really getting going. And that may be a limiting factor perhaps tomorrow. It's possible that there's a zone in the atmosphere where the lapse rates just aren't very impressive. So the storms have a hard time overcoming that and getting real tall in the sky. That's a low confidence thing at this point. There's also potentially some cloud issues for a time tomorrow morning. If a thunderstorm complex traverses the mid-Ohio Valley and we get some serious blow-off from that complex of storms, in other words, some uh, uh, canopy of high clouds, that could limit the instability a little bit. Those are limiting factors. What we have going for us in terms of storms, plenty of moisture. Uh, the dew points will be way up there. It'll be hot. It'll get well up into the 80s tomorrow afternoon. Also, a lot of wind energy aloft. There's a lot of uh, strong, uh, belt, a strong belt of winds, especially by August standards, several thousand feet above our heads. So we have some things going for us. We have some things going against us in terms of thunderstorm formation. Now, timing this out, again, we're going to be mostly sunny for a lot of the morning and midday, but thunderstorms could erupt as early as mid-afternoon, especially with, if any lake breeze activity starts to get going. The most frequent thunderstorms, though, are likely to be mid to late afternoon and early in the evening, somewhere 3, 4 o'clock. 
up through about six, maybe seven o'clock, and then we should be pretty much out of the woods at that point. But in that zone, in that mid to late afternoon zone, any of these storms, even though it does look like they're going to be pretty scattered in nature, any of them could could pack a punch. Um, we dry things out there in the evening, and then a slice of nice for our Sunday with a good deal of sun. Uh, we should be dry to kick off the day Monday, but another pretty fast moving and kind of unusual August system will uh, traverse the lower Great Lakes and this will be accompanied by some showers and some storms. Right now it looks like the best severe weather threat on Monday, maybe just off to our south, but that's a low confidence thing on day four. Um, but that's the way it looks kind of right now. We'll keep an eye on that, but one thing at a time, we've got a potentially busy Saturday ahead of us. Before any storms get going, it'll be a hot one, 86 Saturday afternoon. 82 though Sunday, this will be a fine summer day, kind of like we had today. Uh, Sunday will be very similar to today actually, with dew points around 60, good deal of sun, and temperatures right around where you'd expect at this time of year. All right, a little astronomy geeks before we leave you this evening. A pretty good uh, meteor shower to check out this weekend. It's one of, the, one of the year's better ones for a couple of reasons. One, it's in the summer. A lot of times winter meteor showers, you know, even if they might be sort of impressive, you know, not a lot of us want to, if it's cold out, want to spend a lot of time outdoors looking up at the sky. But this is in the heart of summer. Also, the moon, only 10% illuminated this weekend. It's almost a new moon. And so it'll be, it'll be dark. Um, this is the uh, Perseid meteor shower with a maximum rate of somewhere between 20 and 80 meteors per hour visible. Now, the higher end of that, that's only in the darkest spots. Out in the country, away from artificial lights, could you see that many? For most of us who don't live anywhere near the boondocks, if you will, um, keep your expectations in check. Um, it's probably a 20 to 50 per hour kind of a thing. But even that, you know, you could see one every couple of minutes. Um, and your best chance of this, I think your best opportunity is going to be Saturday night. I think Sunday night we'll have an increase in clouds, especially after midnight. Um, but Saturday night should be pretty good. Uh, thunderstorms will be long gone. The sky will clear pretty quickly. Um, best time frame will be a couple hours after sunset through the overnight. So this is kind of a night owl thing. Um, when per the constellation, constellation Perseus is still pretty high in the sky. After all, that's kind of the origin point or the radiant uh, for these meteors. Um, we want that constellation to be higher in the sky rather than lower and therefore kind of 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. is kind of your best bet. But you don't have to look for the constellation Perseus. You can look anywhere in the sky. In fact, looking straight up is sometimes your best bet because near the horizon there can sometimes be too much artificial light. So looking straight up, um, one of your best bets. Um, and yeah, this is a pretty good one. Something worth checking out. And real quickly, a, a word about the longer range. I posted this on Twitter this afternoon. Uh, but hey, where's this pattern been all summer? This is what's advertised by some of the modeling now uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, or less than two weeks, uh, really about 10 days from now, uh, heading into that final 10 days of August. Um, big, sprawling ridge, no longer confined to the southwest, but a sprawling ridge encompassing a lot of the 40, lower 48 states. And while this ridge is unlikely to park directly over us and put us really in the hot spot, uh, this, may, this kind of pattern may yield some of our hottest weather of the season. I know that's not saying much. We've only had one 90 degree day officially this summer, but we could add a few to that tally if that pattern comes to fruition in about nine to 11 days. Looks pretty hot as a lot of kids head back to school here in mid to late August. That'll do it for me on this Friday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Hope you have a great night, a great weekend. I'll uh, keep you up to date, of course, on Saturday Storm Potential on social media on our newscasts and more than likely throughout the day on Saturday I'll be keeping a very close eye on things and posting frequently. I may even appear on the Saturday evening newscast on 21 News at 6. In the meantime, have a great night and I'll see you back here on Monday.